last session, I just wanted to introduce you to James and explain what James does at Airbnb. He is the general manager for Airbnb UK and Ireland, and he oversees Airbnb's market growth. Prior to that, he did a small, a short stint at a strategy agency called uh, Arthur D. And then prior to that was at Google for eight years um, with his most recent role at Google being a running APAC emerging markets business. So an amazing track record, but I'm very excited. To give you a bit more of an inside track, I think Airbnb is one of those companies we've admired and been watching, but really understand kind of how have they disrupted um, the travel, established travel business, and um, I suppose ultimately put people back at the heart of their holiday. Now, I'd imagine with an audience like yourselves, there's very few of them that don't know what your business is about. But for those of you who don't know much about Airbnb, this is the very simple definition. Um, it's a website for people to list, find, and rent lodging. It has over 1.5 million lists listings, but I'd imagine it's far higher than that. That's the official number I found. In 34,000 cities and 190 countries, founded in 2008, and they are headquartered in San Francisco, and you are still privately owned. So to kick off, um, since when I heard I was going to be hosting and interviewing James, the thing that I really thought about is how have we gone from this world, even not long ago, where we would be booking our holidays, going direct to a hotel, or even using a travel agent, dare I say it, to a world where really, you know, we're renting a stranger's room, or in my case, a stranger's apartment in San Francisco. So I'd love to hear the story. I mean, the, I think I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what this like, taps into and then talk about how the founding of Airbnb came about. <clears throat> and I think if we, you know, we all travel a lot, whether it's for work or for, for pleasure, and you always want to know what life is like as a local. You're always looking to find what's the great coffee shop around the corner. <laughs> You know, if you go to Paris, you'll definitely take a photo of the Eiffel Tower, but you probably want to have some way to experience it in a slightly, a slightly different way. And that's, the, that's not that different from, you know, we were talking earlier, and your brother-in-law lives in San Francisco. I'm sure that when you go there, you ask for some of the tips as to what happens there. And maybe if you had a bigger place, you might, you might actually stay, stay with, uh, with family. Yeah, I try not to listen to him, but yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's, that's probably <laughs> wise. But, um, but that, but even be with the nature of being able to, have the host who is from the area, whether they're in the property or not, but being your kind of your guide as to how to get in and around. It's a bit like staying with friends and family. I'm sure that you know, growing up, we all did that um, through the through time. Whether it's so, if your best friend moved to New York, you're pretty likely to to stay with them. And then the other area where this really taps into is, well, the reason why we all spend a worrying amount of our time, salary, efforts on our home, whether it's buying, renovating, redecorating, um, just time there is that we actually quite like homes. Yeah. That's the reason why you know, we don't choose to live in uh, cookie cutter boxes. Yeah. We live in homes which represent a part of us. Yeah. And that's what it allows you to do, so you're able to be yeah. at home when you're sort of traveling the world. But how it came about was, you know, these are all very kind of grand and philosophical ideas, and they're probably more um, retrofitted than the reality of how it started. So, they started in 2008 actually as a way to, ways to pay the rent. So the three founders lived together in San Francisco, trying to, they decided they were gonna try and do something together to you know, change the world, be the next tech startup, you, you name the, yeah. uh, the dream. But then they had a very real problem, which was that their landlord increased the rent by 25%. Um, and they were all doing bits and pieces, but 25% was too much for them to be able to handle. But they realized that there was a design conference coming to San Francisco. Two of the co-founders are designers, so they had some connections in, in, that, in that area. And they realized that what's true of most of the conferences is that hotels are booked up. Anything that isn't is very highly priced. Yeah. Lots of people want to come. And they also realized that they had an asset they weren't using, which was their front room and three airbeds. So they knocked up a very, very small website, a long way from the website that we have today, and they actually offered this to people to stay. They would be able to stay with the, uh, with the founders, um, get a breakfast of Pop-Tarts, um, not necessarily the most uh, full-on experience, and stay, on the, and stay on the airbed. So that's, the Airbnb was originally airbed and breakfast. And to begin with, it was that you did serve breakfast um, as well. And I know we've said you've got over 1.5 million listings, but how do we make this really, really mainstream? What do you know? What do you think is holding it back from becoming even more mainstream? I think 1.5 million listings are. It's kind of somewhere between 1.5 and 2 at the at the moment. That's relatively mainstream, and it's 
the, the only countries where you couldn't find an Airbnb listing to stay in would be Syria, Iran, and North Korea. And I think that, that's more of, maybe that's more of an Obama solution than, yeah. a, uh, <clears throat> than, yeah. a, than a business solution. Yeah. And then on the, and to, to, to take the, the UK as an example, that there's uh, around 67,000 listings in the, okay. in the UK, about 35,000 of those in, in London. So I think the nature of people looking to sort of share their homes yeah. is becoming more mainstream. A lot of it comes down to the, the, the interest from that host side of that mm. it's a way to meet people. And if, you know, I think of, they, we have quite a big segment of hosts that are people probably the age of the parents of most of the people in the audience. And if I think of, of my dad who likes to tell people what to go and do, yeah. or my mum who would be interested in providing hospitality, yeah. that that taps into a style of people who are looking to provide hospitality to people who come. Uh, there's another, certainly there's another angle that it's actually a good source of income. Yeah. That when we ask more than half of our hosts, they actually use the money that they get from Airbnb to stay, pay the bills to help stay in their homes. And certainly when, to take London, when it's about as expensive a city as you can, you can get to have some help to pay the electricity bills and gas bills and hopefully make some friends into the, into the bargain is one of the reasons why it's become uh, a much more successful. And looking at the overall business, and for those of you who follow kind of suppose that the value of the, these tech businesses, I'd love to get your thoughts. Is Airbnb overvalued? And I'll, I think I'll leave that to some of the more, well, um, maybe former investment banker who, uh, who spoke before us could give a better idea on that. But I think when you look at what the nature of the business is, so yeah. you know, there's been more than 60 million guests that have traveled on Airbnb yeah. thus far. And we recently had our biggest night ever in August, which was where nearly a million people were staying with Airbnb around the world. Wow. And that was, you know, whether it's London or Paris, or there are people staying in Madagascar, like the Faroe Islands, that there's certainly a broad range of yeah. what this is. And that what it taps into is that, as we talked earlier, of the, you know, when we ask, like nine out of 10 people say that they want to be able to live like a local yeah. when they travel. And this is a way in for that to be able to actually meet people who are yeah. from the place, get some yeah. of the the tips in addition to the amount of research yep. that everyone puts into their holidays. You haven't really answered the question, but we will let you get away Thank with you. that. Um, so what are the biggest threats to the business? Clearly so far, it, it has been a very successful story and a great story to follow, but there must have been, and there must be still threats that kind of keep you up at night. I think the, the biggest challenges and you know, from many of the businesses in the audience of how you continue to scale and be able to become, as you say, more mainstream, but yeah. whilst keeping the yeah. person that's your 100th million, 100 yeah. millionth customer as happy, if not more happy, than the person that was your 10th. And so how you can move people along from the freeloaders to the, to the super fans. But when you've got such, such high growth, it's how we're able to keep up both with the, on the more like product side, on the, on the support side, but also in how we're there for the people within the community and how we can actually make that much, much broader. And so an example of one of the things we're doing to help reduce some of that distance yeah. to the people who are, like the hosts are ultimately what you experience of, yeah. of Airbnb that we have um, in next month in Paris. We have the equivalent of say like a, a Dreamforce or a Google I.O. or a, or a, a F8 for Facebook yeah. for our hosts where we've got 6,000 hosts from 100 different countries are gonna come to Paris. And we're actually gonna have a mixture of some you know, product announcements, uh, workshops around hospitality, guest speakers, but that's a great way to yeah. actually have, bring people along just to connect and share their experiences across the way. And certainly for us, it's very valuable. And um, you know, our, our community, and we have many people who are super fans, but that also means they don't hold back when they have things that they have uh, suggestions for you. And I frequently get either calls or emails from like, our hosts and guests in London about things that we can improve on. So that's, that like, direct bit beats any focus groups or whatever that you could, uh, you could look to facilitate. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm going to get some good stories out of James in a yeah. bit. Um, I think sometimes at some of these conferences, we often just celebrate the great stuff. And I think what's more useful sometimes is, is to talk about kind of what you learned along the way, you know, what has gone wrong, I suppose, and what you've learned from that. I think the biggest thing which our, our CEO um, puts in very, very strongly in almost every presentation that you may make to him, it's he has a concept of add a zero. <laughs> And you know, sometimes that's a bit frustrating when you're, um, when you're talking about you know, 2016 planning and yeah. asked to add a zero on certain stuff and then maybe the budget doesn't yeah. also come with an additional zero. But the heart of that came from when there was the first incidence of um, a, a guest making damage to an Airbnb property. Yeah. I think it was probably in 2010 or 2011. 
And because there's so much trust within the system and the yeah. importance of reviews that you get to know the person before they come, but that still things may happen. Yeah. And as a response, uh, like the CEO decided to put in a host guarantee. So that meaning if there is damage which is made to your property by an Airbnb guest, then regardless of your insurance situation, Airbnb will have you covered up to a certain level. Yeah. And the initial point that they wanted to put in was, I think it was like $50,000, okay. which is, I mean, if you're going to make $50,000 worth of damage, that's quite a lot. <laughs> but the, the advice that he got from um, one of the investors like Mark Anderson was add a zero, make it $500,000. And I think our CEO kind of went, well, so if someone claims this, yeah. then we're out of business. Yeah. And maybe he also said, well, it's easy for Mark Anderson to say add a zero, you know, 500,000 versus 50,000 yeah. for him. But the importance of that was that it was the statement that was made and that the, I guess, that importance of the guarantee and the importance of trust within, I guess, all like sharing economy companies yeah. is so key that you need to provide an outsized set of support to cater for that. And I think that's one of the big lessons of to be able to provide that complete, like more than safety net, but real security and peace yeah. of mind, regardless of what the cost is, because, you know, and going back to what Nicholas was saying before, that these are all the people that are often your super fans and that you need to be there, there for them much more than you possibly could be. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I did talk about in my introduction, the fact that you have disrupted these, what is the established travel hotel industry. And unlike people like Uber that have had quite a lot of negative press, but for think about Uber and yourselves, do you think you're just kind of adding value or do you see yourselves in terms of just undercutting these traditional businesses? All right, so there's only one sort of answer I can provide to yeah. that. It's a harsh one, question, no, I'm exactly, fully aware. Yeah. But I think it is, if I talk on the more, like some of the kind of the environmental or economic uh, impacts of, of sharing economy. So on the environmental side, we find that people who stay in an Airbnb will spend actually use 78% yeah. less energy than those who are staying in the hotel. Yeah. They kind of make sense, you know, yeah. there's not uh, halogen lights in the lobby and the aircon's not running in the gym, uh, the gym the whole time. But also that people are more, about 10 to 15% more likely to take public transport when they're traveling. Yeah. So there's certainly an economic, uh, an environmental benefit to that. And then if you add in the, in sort of pure economic terms of using assets that aren't being used otherwise. And in 2013, we did a study for the UK and found that there was like over 500 million pounds worth of economic investment that came out of people staying in Airbnbs. Yeah. And that when you add in that there's so much of the, um, so much of the business is actually outside of the traditional yeah. district. So three quarters of the listings in London are outside of the hotel district. So it's much more likely to be Kennington than Kensington. And that spreads out those proceeds of tourism much broader. So I'm conscious we haven't got loads of time, but this is now the interesting stuff. So um, last year, for those of you who aren't aware, Airbnb went through quite a large rebrand. I'd love you to share with the audience, kind of, what did you learn from it? Because obviously it got quite a lot of press. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the, for those that remember the old Airbnb logo, it was very classic yeah. uh, West Coast tech of all lowercase letters, slightly funky fonts. Um, I mean, actually it was blue and white. So I mean, I presume it wasn't due to a, a legal suit from the Facebook lawyers <laughs> and that side, but, um, but the, the, the goal behind it was to look to create a logo that represented what the company is about rather than just the name. Yeah. And if you think of companies like Nike or Apple or, or particularly brands which are known in, in languages where it's not Roman script, yeah. then that's, that's important. And there was a lot of you know, great design work and creative agency work. And then probably about the day it was released, all the discussion on social media was about what this looks like. Um, and I'm sure people, the, the main discussion was which, which set of private parts does the Airbnb yeah. logo um, most look like? And I think that caused a lot of, well, obviously, the, the, I mean, I think I remember reading some of the articles and people going, does this mean that Airbnb is gonna have to pull their logo and, and change it? And I think that's, it certainly caused a lot of discussion internally about, well, you know, we're really proud with this great new design and now everyone's talking about whether it looks like well, um, I'm well, not sure. Well, publicity on a positive. Well, exactly. And I think that's, the, that's one of the bits that we took out of it was that rather than trying to do the release statement, yeah. shut down mm -hmm. sort of discussion and then leave away, that actually having a bit of fun with the, yeah. with, the, with the discussion and even releasing some of the bits of our own of, well, you know, here's what you might think it yeah. looks like. And it actually provided a great opportunity to talk about what we, what we were around. Yeah. 
Um, and given we're here to talk about digital mobile, you know, how much of your business is mobile? You can talk a little bit about that, but within a time limit. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, like, like anyone in the, in, well, all industries, the travel industry, the importance of mobile is just increasing. You know, we see it's around sort of 25 to 30 percent of the, of the bookings will come through that channel in one way, shape or form. But I think also it's the importance of mobile in the, the actual discovery and dreaming journey of, um, of people when they're booking travel. So especially when you're on a long commute and it's pretty boring that what better way to, to actually dream about something more interesting than to maybe like have a browse around on the app or see some of the videos or engage on other platforms. So it provides, there's definitely a big transactional area, yeah. but I think it's almost more important in that like early stage in the you know, classic marketing, the top of the funnel of yeah. when people are dreaming about a particular Absolutely. destination. Absolutely. And then can, I suppose, what, what's the end game for Evian? Is it a kind of peaceful coexistence with the established travel industry, hotel industry, or are you there to really disrupt them and put them all out of business? Uh, travel is a very, very big industry and you know, everyone's, everyone's being successful at the moment. Yeah. If you look at, to take London, hotel occupancy rates have been rising for the last 15 years and they're forecast to continue to do so. And it really is about consumer choice. Yeah. And if you think of the whole industry is looking at how you can you provide greater experiences for, for guests and how can you personalize more. And I think it's just about how the different companies provide that. So if you think of like Starwood, the type of person that stays in uh, Le Meridien was looking for a very, very different thing than the person that stays in the W. Yeah. And everybody's looking to cater for that in a different style of the, it's, than the individuality of people's homes. So we believe that there's, this is a big industry. And in fact, a lot of the areas we find that the trips that happen on Airbnb are actually incremental that wouldn't happen otherwise, like with big conferences or sporting events. Right. Well, I can say it's for you. My parents have a bed and breakfast. They yeah. even start to talk to me about Airbnb and their <laughs> concerns. So we have a tradition at Facebook where we love a quick fire after a fireside chat. So you have to, no time to think. Yeah. I want quick answers. What's the best place you've ever stayed? I uh, stayed in, well, I've got to say an Airbnb listing, of course, um, but uh, one in Fiji, it was in, sort of in the south coast of Fiji. Oof, it was like being in wow. Ernest Hemingway's home if he was in Fiji. So it was all like log cabins and books and there was a little garden where you could just sit down and watch the sunset. Nice. Um, I need you to be biased here. Yeah. Favourite social platform? Well, Google Plus was great. No, no, I'm going to say. I mean, Instagram, in, Instagram for the way in which it's actually meant that people express themselves through images far, far more than they could have done in, in another situation. Few, I'd have got told off if you'd said something yeah. else. Um, if you weren't working at Airbnb, what startup would you be working at today? I think it's anything, anything with a vision, that something where you've got an importance of what the goals of the company are, but also that it's more than just a pure capitalist game. All right, hot new destination that the audience should know about. Maybe it's not new, but I looked at some of the figures before I came in and that the the biggest growth that we had anywhere for Airbnb in the UK was people going to Cornwall. So maybe this is uh, rediscovering right. some great places down there. <laughs> um, best Airbnb story you've never shared? This is the um, last thing I'm asking, okay. so make it a good one. Uh, so uh, maybe this is the, the thing which got me through my interviews okay. uh, was that when I had to go to San Francisco to meet with uh, the founders for interviews, I stayed with an Airbnb host and he was working in tech and he was looking to test out his new app on me, which was, you know, those smart locks you get where on doors where you can like punch in the yeah. code. And he was trying to work on something which would mean that he could text his guests the code. <laughs> and like in the, and I was kind of like, well, this is interesting, but I'm not far from an engineer. But then in the, in one of the interviews with the, the most technical co-founder, he said, you need to make one product change and explain to me how you would actually do it. What is it? And this was the fortunate moment where at least, I mean, I'm sure I got some of the words wrong. I, I dropped APK in like I knew what I was maybe talking about, but that I actually sort of pitched this idea of smart locks and apps. And I think that was one that saved me from <laughs> an embarrassment of going, um, the, well, we can do more with the checkouts or... <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I'm sure you all agree with me. Airbnb is such an amazing business and we're all very excited to see how you continue to expand. Thank you. Thank you.